The Zhou Dynasty, spanning from 1022 BC to 256 BCE, was a remarkable epoch in Chinese history. It emerged after the Shang Dynasty and preceded the powerful Qin Dynasty. What makes the Zhou Dynasty truly distinctive is its exceptional longevity, lasting longer than any other Chinese dynasty. During this era, a significant development occurred, the introduction of iron to China. This technological leap paved the way for a host of advancements, both in industry and warfare. The Zhou Dynasty also witnessed the evolution of the written script, progressing from early Western Zhou bronze inscriptions to the archaic clerical script of the late Warring States period. One of the most enduring contributions of the Zhou dynasty was the concept of the Mandate of Heaven. This doctrine postulated that the king or emperor ruled as the direct representative of the gods. It was believed that the earthly bureaucracy mirrored the heavenly one, with earth symbolizing the masculine, yang, aspect and heaven representing the feminine, yin, aspect. To maintain harmony and balance between these two realms was paramount because what transpired on earth influenced heaven, and vice versa. This profound philosophy emphasized living in harmony with the forces of the universe, advocating a state of wu-wei, flowing with, rather than against, the natural rhythms of life and nature. Consequently, the ancient Chinese developed a deep, empathetic connection with the natural world, treating it with reverence and respect. The Zhou dynasty provided stability to a vast expanse of China for nearly a millennium. This stability allowed people to cultivate a sense of mutual responsibility and a shared worldview. It underlined the importance of family duties and responsibilities towards the state. Unlike the European doctrine of the divine right of kings, which emerged almost two millennia later, the Chinese mandate of heaven recognized that a ruler could lose this divine mandate if his rule did not benefit the people. Confucius, the great teacher who lived during the Zhou dynasty, further emphasized these principles. He advised rulers to lead with love and virtuous example rather than coercion. He advocated for humane cooperation, politeness, and ethical living. Ren. In Confucius' vision, a polite and well-ordered society, where everyone had a defined role, would eliminate hatred and warfare. Unfortunately, in contemporary governance, vested interests often dominate agendas and policies, favoring the few over the many. However, during the Zhou dynasty, the radical idea that rulers should genuinely care for their subjects and work for their well-being thrived. In the Chinese historical tradition, the Zhou rulers displaced the Shang dynasty by invoking the Mandate of Heaven. This concept explained the rise and fall of dynasties while supporting the legitimacy of present and future rulers. The Zhou dynasty, led by the Ji family and with its capital at Hao, near modern Xi'an, expanded Shang culture through much of China north of the Yangtze River. According to the Zhou, the Shang dynasty had ruled unjustly, depleting the kingdom's resources. The mandate, they believed, demanded just rule, with each generation needing to justify the dynasty's continued claim to it. Negligence and abuse could lead to the revocation of the mandate, a stark reminder that the will of the people ultimately determined the legitimacy of a ruler's reign. Step into the annals of ancient China, and you'll encounter a realm known as the Zhou Dynasty. This era, which stretched from 1022 BC to 256 BCE, occupies a significant place in history, not just for its temporal length but for the profound changes it introduced to Chinese governance and culture. The political structure of the Zhou dynasty is often likened to feudalism in medieval Europe, but Chinese historians have a more apt term, the Fengian system. This system witnessed the gradual centralization of power and the establishment of formalized political and economic institutions. These changes, likely occurring in the later stages of the Zhou dynasty, led to more centralized control over local governments and a structured system of agrarian taxation. As the Zhou dynasty progressed, the landscape of governance underwent a transformation, with power becoming increasingly impersonal. The tale of the Zhou dynasty can be divided into two chapters, the Western Zhou, Zai Zhou, lasting until 771 BCE, and the Eastern Zhou, Dong Zhou, from 770 BCE to 256 BCE. This division emerged because of a pivotal event in 771 BC Kinyu of Zhou replaced his queen with a concubine, leading to the capital sacking by the Marquis of Shen, the powerful father of the deposed queen. The nobles from the states of Zheng, Lu, Qin, and the Marquis of Shen proclaimed Kingping of Zhou as the new ruler. 
This momentous event led to the relocation of the capital to Luoyang in 722 BCE, marking the transition from the Western to the Eastern Zhou. The exact beginning of the Western Zhou era is a subject of historical debate, with proposed dates ranging from 1122 BCE to 1027 BCE. However, Chinese historians use 841 BCE as the starting point for their annual dating of China's history, based on the work of Sima Chen in the records of the Grand Historian. The Eastern Zhou era is further divided into two sub-periods, the Spring and Autumn period and the Warring States period. The latter extended beyond the official end of the Eastern Zhou due to the Qin Dynasty's rise, which ultimately brought an end to the Warring States era in 221 BCE. As time marched forward, the Zhou Dynasty encountered a period of decline. True power increasingly shifted from the royal line to influential nobles. By the end of the Zhou Dynasty, these nobles didn't even bother to symbolically acknowledge the Ji family's rule and declared themselves as kings. This fracturing of the kingdom accelerated the dynasty's fragmentation. In 221 BCE, the Qin Dynasty, led by Qin Shi Huang, unified China, marking the definitive end of the Zhou Dynasty. Despite the Zhou's long-standing concern for unity, they couldn't preserve the empire's coherence and, in the end, lost the mandate of heaven. Agriculture thrived during the Zhou Dynasty, guided by an intensive system directed by the government. All farming lands were owned by nobles, who then allocated land to serfs. This arrangement, reminiscent of European feudalism, aimed to ensure a steady food supply. A unique feature was the division of land into nine squares, forming the shape of the character water well, or jing. The central square's grain went to the government, while the surrounding squares belonged to individual farmers. This allowed the government to store surplus food, ensuring a safety net during famines or poor harvests. Bronze production was a significant manufacturing sector during this period, dominated by the nobility. The legacy of the Zhou dynasty is profound. It provided stability and a shared cultural foundation to a vast region of China for over a millennium. This paved the way for the ultimate unification of China under the Qin dynasty in 221 BCE. During the Zhou dynasty, two great philosophers emerged, each leaving an indelible mark on Chinese thought. Confucius laid the foundations of Confucianism, emphasizing social responsibility, ethical conduct, and the duties of rulers and subjects. His teachings advocated balance and harmony within society and between heaven and earth. Lao Jia, on the other hand, is the sage behind Taoism, teaching the concept of Wu Wei, aligning with nature rather than trying to dominate it. He emphasized the balance between opposing forces and the natural order of existence. These philosophies continue to shape Chinese culture and thought to this day.